Hi everybody and welcome to 120, your chief contrarian officer at your full disposal. I want to shed light on one of this latest myths that, you know, we all have to go all, everything electric and I've talked about it in the past, but now there's a worry that, oh, there's not enough of lithium in the world for the ionized, uh, you know, lithium ionized batteries and EV cars and what's going to happen to our climate? Well, wait a minute. First of all, in a Tesla, everything is from oil and gas, from carbon black in the tires, to the steel, to the aluminum. And if anybody tells you that these things don't require high intensity electricity generation, power generation from steel, from aluminum, you know, all of that are lying, basically. Let alone the byproducts of petrochemicals on the dashboard, the interiors of the cars. So the only thing that Tesla has differentiated in many ways, it's it's power generation system. No question about that. You know, novel cause and novel movement in, in direction of human mobility. But where we fail to understand and what we fail to understand is that oil and gas in itself is not bad. It's not evil. What's bad and evil is how we secure these oil and gas uh, resources. Case in point, Iraq war. What's worse is how we burn this oil and gas for destruction and demolition. Case in point, Ukraine. And worst of all, what's left behind? Look at Afghanistan, a country in famine of 20 years of scope one, two, and three unreported carbon emissions with $1 trillion of lithium reserves and deposits based on NASA's assessment. So I think where we have gone a little bit disarray is that we think that we can make our way into the future on everything's electric without understanding the significance of oil and gas without understanding that this carbon capture and storage, I mean, this is nonsense. The, the rate in which we're producing carbon, no carbon capture storage can, you know, uh, catch up, basically. I mean, maybe, maybe part of this electric movement should be as well uh, an electric shock for ourselves in order to understand the significance of the way we're wasting energy in conflicts, in wars, and we're barking at the wrong tree. You know, the, the reality is that if we have to um, increase the, you know, the capacity of, you know, carbon capture and storage by 40 folds uh, to catch up, but how many folds are we creating new emissions? The cost of carbon capture and storage per ton in cement is anywhere from 60 to $100 a ton. Just think about the amount of cement and concrete structure that we have demolished in recent wars and the ongoing war. The best solution for getting into a net zero is to sending the aggressors a carbon tax for their emissions of scope one, two, and three. Otherwise, you know, we're in one day, you know, BlackRock is voting against climate change resolutions, one day in favor. We have to wake up and smell the roses. We're barking at the wrong tree. And whether you go head to head with that tree in a Tesla or in another car, no airbag can save us from this fallacy that we have got it right and we are capturing carbon. No, we are not. We're generating much more than anybody can imagine and not from the conventional ways that you and I use for heating a house or driving your son or your daughter to the school. The key question is the emission of conflicts and wars. The rest is just nonsense. Do subscribe. See you soon and keep up.